If you think that my 400 watt FTP is going to win me bike races, think again, because in this race, I got dropped within the first six minutes. It's game over. We're out. Finito. C'est tout. Afgelopen. Sloes. In this video, I'm gonna talk about something that's more important than raw power numbers, which is gonna save you energy and get you a better chance on winning bike races or your local group ride. Besides race footage, I'm also gonna show you some details about my power numbers of this very hard race. Right, just arrived in uh, Ericsson. I'm riding my first real race on home soil in the Netherlands in over three years. Weather, complete sh I don't like riding in the rain, but I'm dedicated to doing this race. Dropped off the kids at my parents. They sign by Opa and Oma. This race is amateurs and elite combined, so high level. It's the first kind of real race of the year, so I really expect guys to be going all out today to, to show you know what they're made of. So um, fingers crossed. Last week I showed you guys in my first training race a bit of corner speed and riding in the rain and all of that stuff. This is another level, okay? So I hope I can still sort of put these focus points, these skills into practice on a race like this. Rock and roll. The start position was determined by a lottery. In this case, that's where my death sentence was written, guys. I ended up pretty much all the way in the back of the 110 riders at the start line today. And as you're about to see right now, this was going to be mission impossible. This race was a crazy one. Looking at the statistics, I got a whole bunch of these gold achievements, meaning I had a personal best in the last 12 months, including my three, four and 60 minute power numbers. But all these numbers are useless if you're not applying them the right way and if you're in the wrong position. And that's what we're gonna see today. This race was just full gas from the gun. Going through the first turn here, here we go, 800 watts out of that corner. It's a long line already. I started all the way in the back. Now tell me, where am I going to make up position in this race? You can already see it's a super long line. Look at the right side of the screen there. The guys in front are going full gas. The weather was difficult. It was windy. I put a weather indication on the map display in the top left. Right now we're going straight into the wind. And as we would turn to the south, we're going to have a tailwind from the left. Now, guys, this is the most the toughest condition you can be in with a tailwind from one side because the speed is going to be super high. You need to be in an echelon and keep rotating to be able to do anything or you're going to be in the gutter as you already see happening right now. Look how far that peloton is already, how far it is already stretched out and we're only two minutes in this race and you can already see it's broken up. There's a peloton in the front and then there's a single file line of suckers like me who are hugging the shoulder grinding full gas in the gutter and one guy one guy can't hold the wheel and we have major major problems now we're sort of able to close this gap because of this corner that's coming up bit more corner speed than the whole peloton but as we come out of this corner again accelerating with five six seven eight hundred watts there's no way for me to improve my position Sure, push a little bit more than the rest, but dude, I'm already pushing five, six hundred watts. That's kind of how much I've got. The first four minutes of this race, I had an average watts of 475. That's like my best in the last 12 months. But today we're doing it hardly with a warm up, with all these spikes in power on a very cold day. Here, there's another guy who needs to drop. The thing is, he opens up a gap, which is impossible to close. We're doing 50k an hour. I'm pushing 600 watts to stay in the wheel of the guy in front of me because the wind is coming from the left. There's no draft. There's no draft. You need to be in an echelon right now. And that's what the guys in front of us are doing. So it's all about position. My position absolutely sucks. Right now, I'm a mouse in a bucket. 
I started swimming as the whistle went off of this race and I have no chance. Here we are at the end of that straightaway, that long tailwind straight and I did 2 minutes at 520 watts average just to stay in the wheel. That was just crazy. So here's a few corners, a 90 degree to the right, 90 degree to the left and every time you see a 90 degree turn we'll swap sides of the road. So either the echelon is going to rotate the other way or the, everyone is just hugging the shoulder on the other side of the road because you're trying to get that last little bit of draft of the guy in front of you. So another acceleration out of that corner and you know I'm pushing seven, six, seven hundred watts and I can't even hold the wheel of the guy in front of me and at that point I'm just smoked, I'm done. So I steer out. Thank you for coming, nice try man, see you later and goodbye. That's it for today. Six minutes in a race? Are you kidding me? Well, not that quick, man. A lot can still happen. So, I'm, you know, I'm still trying to stay with them. But then, nasty crash. Guys on the ground, left and right. We all have to slam the brakes. You know, reducing speed all the way down to 34 kilometers an hour. While the peloton is just, you know, full steam ahead. 50k an hour, blazing fast. So, yeah kind of a difficult start of my season difficult start of this race last week was a walk in the park compared to what's happening today and um, you know I, I arrived at this race I went to this race feeling you know I, I wouldn't say confident but I thought I was in pretty good shape I did my best ever 20 minute power a few weeks ago I did like 428 watts for 20 minutes and now I need to drop while pushing 400. That's kind of weird, right? But it's the spikes and these, you know, accelerations and, and, and one minute at 700 and two minutes at 520 watts. You know, for the last three years, I haven't done these races. I haven't done crit races. I haven't done road races. I've done hot route, which is a lot at steady power, climbing for 40 50 60 minutes at the same power numbers uh, there's no attacks no accelerations like this i've got some work to do i need to get back race fit and i mean like road race fit criterium race fit and uh yeah that's gonna take a little bit of time but this was a good reality check and to be honest guys i had no chance in this race in this case, the start position was out of my control, but sometimes you can, you know, arrive at the start early and then you may be in the front of the peloton. Sometimes there is a neutralized uh, zone, like a neutralized five kilometers before the race actually starts. And then you can get into a good position for the start of the race. But windy races in the Netherlands usually go like this, where it just splits up into pieces within the first few minutes. So this was kind of crap, but what I wanted to show you guys is that position is everything. I can have a 500 watt FTP, it doesn't matter. The strongest rider will not win this race. The smartest rider and the rider that can get the best position will win the race. What you often see in races like this that there's, there's pretty much a sprint towards corners when riders know when they anticipate a crosswind and then you know you have to be there within the first five to ten riders to be in that first echelon and if you miss out on that you can forget it you're in the gutter you're gonna smoke yourself up within a couple minutes the guys in front of you are rotating in an echelon they're dividing the force the power numbers over five six seven riders and you are there by yourself pedaling squares and hugging the shoulder with a wind from the side burning all of your matches within a few minutes and that's done so now in my case this all started straight from the beginning of the race but it can happen at any point in any race if you know where the crosswind will be you know you have to be in the front because this will happen in the back of the peloton and if you're in the front you don't even notice it but if you're in the back it's a battle and every echelon is a battle by the way to get in and to stay in so it's just riding echelons is so hard um, so right now we are in this little group right and we're working together everybody works together we're allies we want to stay together we're going over the full road so that means the first rider is all the way to the right and we do an echelon all the way to the left because the wind's coming from the right side 
we are trying to go as fast as we can so we can maybe catch up with the first group in this race at this moment i actually thought well maybe if i stay in this echelon you know we're gonna ride back to the peloton and then you know happy end usually that doesn't happen usually the best riders are actually uh picking the best position in this case i had no influence on that but usually if you're in a second third fourth fifth group at the end it breaks up into pieces like that you, you have to be very very lucky if it all comes back together but it's possible if there's a long straightaway with no crosswind for example then it gets easier for everyone and then sometimes the whole peloton just comes back together but not today here we are crossing start finish for the first time so it's about eight kilometers 11 minutes in this race i'm dropped out i'm in this group and when we are rotating in these echelons it just gets so much easier well what is easy i mean uh averaging about 370 watts over the next lap when i was riding in the echelon versus 420 in the first lap when i was in the gutter the whole time so that's a 50 watt difference just by position so very very big difference it's also very dependent on the wind direction as I told you guys, tailwind is the hardest condition for an echelon. If you have a headwind, the draft just gets a bit bigger. The speeds are a little slower, so it's easier to position. So you can have a little bit more rest when you're in our second, third, fourth, fifth wheel versus when you have a tailwind. Because the wind's already blowing in the same direction. You know, there's, there's no draft. There's hardly any draft on a tailwind so that's why the difference uh, is so big in power numbers and why it's so hard having a tailwind uh, in an echelon this was also a very difficult part of the lap because all of these corners these turns they sort of mess up the echelon there's no possibility to to keep that same structure so you're basically all riding behind each other and then reducing the draft so it's just it was a very tough bit of the lap and we're also about to enter that tailwind section again which is also hard there basically there was no easy section in this race there was no easy part of the lap it was all hard uh, i'm dying literally dying in the wheel right now and it feels like your finger is in the door and it's either more painful to get it out and it's more painful to let it be in there it's just everything's pain and there's a devil on my shoulders telling me the whole time like dude just quit you're a, you're a mouse in a bucket you're not gonna survive this why are you still doing this just stop stop right now it's just gonna be more pain more pain the whole time so you really need a strong mindset when you're in this sucky position like i was in because it's so much easier just to quit but also we're not here for nothing and i'm not here to ride 10 minutes and go home so i was gonna keep it up until I die, basically. I'm gonna keep it up as long as I can. In the second lap, on the tailwind section again, I got off the front and look what happens when I fall back too quick and I don't hold the wheel of the guy in front of me. My power, 450, 450, 500. Right now I have to get into that last wheel, 700 watts accelerating to, get, to jump back into that wheel. And now I get a little bit of draft. So, even though I'm in the echelon, I wasn't riding it correctly and I'm still messing myself up. Now they're accelerating very hard. They're trying to close a gap. So again, five, six, seven hundred watts in the draft. It just never stops. It just kept on going like this. Then they close the gap towards these guys and they just go past them. And there's more riders up the road. You know, we were a big group, but we kept falling apart every time into bits and pieces. Then, when, then we, you know, picked everybody up again and it would be a new echelon and it would fall back apart. So it just, it's a battle the whole time for position and to stay in the echelon and to keep rotating correctly and to keep getting that draft. And right now the guy in red, he just accelerates just too fast. I'm not going to hold that wheel. I steer out to the left. Other guys will overtake me. We'll get a new rotation and uh, then we'll just close the gap again. Here we're at the end of the tailwind section. My power is already fading. I've got a gap, but I know this corner is coming up. So I'm sort of using my corner speed to get back into that last wheel. I still have to accelerate very hard because these guys are accelerating like crazy. 
every time. Um, but yeah, I was on the on the verge of breaking at this point. Approaching start finish again, 15k in the race. Heart rate is ramping up, 183. That's above my threshold. The fatigue is kicking in already after 21 minutes. It's getting harder and harder right now. You can see the screen is all covered with mud and crap from the road. I had the same in my face, so you can imagine how crappy the visibility was and how hard the race conditions were. Uh, it was the, the roads were really wet, but it also started raining. So I think by now I've shown you guys that position is very important and the amount of power you can produce is less important. I mean, I was not gonna even last for one lap if I would have an FTP of 200. That's pretty obvious, but your position makes a very, very big difference in races like this. Now we are approaching, this is the third lap, again, that tailwind section I'm already have already having to kind of drop out right here because I'm just my matches are done uh, too much fatigue in a too short period of time there's one corner coming up so I'm trying to use my corner speed which I talked about last week to sort of get back into that wheel accelerate hard but the gap was too big and I just felt that my legs weren't there anymore and it's less than 24 minutes in this race and i really had to drop right now i really had to let it go so really crap one guy blazes past me never gonna get in that wheel and by now i i thought my race was done it was over i in my head i was the last rider in this race which wasn't true actually which you're gonna see later in this video but right now i thought i'm not gonna finish this race then this car passes me. I'm like, all right, I've been behind a team car before. Let's do this. Maybe this is another chance. I'm going to get in this car's draft and just go fast. But remember, we're in the tailwind section. So even though riding behind the car was going to save me a little bit of energy, it's far less than when you would have a big headwind. Now we're doing 50k an hour. I'm still pushing. 400 watts right now to stay in the draft of this car 500 watts right now i was not recovering uh i was just extending my feeling of dying right now uh, and i felt like okay i didn't have any recovery yet not gonna happen so i also had to let the car go so right now i was 100 percent sure that i was never gonna get back into any group i look down at my cycling computer and i see i've done less than 30 minutes I came all the way here, I prepared my bike, I prepared my food, and I rode for less than 30 minutes. That's not gonna happen. So I figured, what the heck, I'm going to ride at my FTP, I'm going to ride at 400 watts for as long as I can. I'm gonna see how that is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check if I can ride at 400 watts for a longer time, and maybe I can fill up the hour. At least then I would have a efficient or maybe not efficient but i would have a hard training session so that's what i did i started riding 400 watts well at least i tried for as best as i could and i kept it up and to be honest i felt kind of stupid i mean there's people on the side of the road and they're seeing me ride all alone full gas and all I could think of that these people were watching me and they're thinking like, what is this guy doing? He's already out of the race. Why is he still pushing so hard? Why is he still like acting as if he's, you know, the first ride in the race as, as if he's attacking or something? I just thought that they would think that I was stupid. Inception. Start finish here again. Nine laps to go. So we are about a lap further up the race. 40 minutes into the race and I look back I actually see a group so I wasn't the last guy in the race I wasn't the only one which was still riding they were behind me the whole time so I just uh, figured all right then I'm just gonna join these guys I'm gonna get into their rotation let's keep riding it's already a shitty day it's already a hard day a tough day a wet day a crappy day let's make 
the most out of it let's get some more time in this race on the bike in an echelon more suffering which is all gonna help me in the future so i'm not gonna drag this footage out more than i've already done i've done some rambling about positioning about echelons we rode another two laps with this group and then crossing start finish again after an hour and six minutes we got taken out of the race why i hear you think well that's just how it goes in the netherlands man they want to keep the group close together and if you get too far behind the first group like more than what is it four five six minutes they just pull you out of the race and then it's go the game over you can go home thank you very much see you later it's game over we're out finito set two afgelopen sloes fuck Doei! <laughs> nou, dat was Corbin krachtig, dames en heren. Lekker rondje gefietst weer. Deze zaterdag mooi dag. Well, that was a reality check. Okay, let's have a look at this race file. This is the full race. My average power was 350 watts, but the normalized was 367 watts. So that's almost 20 watts higher. So you can pretty much add up 20 watts to any number that I'm mentioning if you want to know the normalized power. So I got a whole bunch of goal achievements in the last 12 months, PRs, 3, 4, 60 minutes. So let's have a look what these numbers actually are. Here we have the complete file. Power numbers, threshold is here set at a 395. This was the first lap second lap and then here i got behind the car i got dropped and that's here is where i started doing my own pace so let's have a look at these power numbers of being in the gutter riding by yourself and then being in an echelon first lap about 10 minutes was 420 watts then the second lap i did 340 watts so that's 80 watts less in the second lap and then if we combine the first two laps together, that's 20 minutes at 380 watts. So normalized would be around 400. So that's pretty high. Then I got dropped completely here and I started doing my own pace. And I did, uh, let's see, 390 watts for 10 minutes. And that's when I got into that other group and we started doing echelons. And you can see at when I do echelons, you can see all these spikes of power. That's when you are rotating and you get to the end of the echelon and you need to re-accelerate to get back into the wheel of the, the last guy. So this is way more spiky than when I was riding by myself. Where I'm riding in the echelons, I was doing about 10 minutes at 330 watts. So that's 60 watts lower than when you're riding by yourself. So all of these numbers have very big differences. So then I can show you the power curve of this ride against my best ever, or actually I want to show you against 22 and 23. So the last year against this ride, this activity is in light green and the three minute was really high. Four minutes was my best in the last year. So it's 475 watts for four minutes. And then also like my 40 minute power and my one hour power was really high compared to what I've been doing the last year. Compared to my best ever, the shorter efforts, I've done better numbers. But if you look at this, like the 10 minute, it's actually not that big of a difference. So yeah, this was just a very hard race. And if you look at my power numbers, I did pretty good job for me, but the outcome of the race totally sucked. <sighs> Talked to a few other riders. Um, they kind of said the same thing in weather like this on a race like this being in the back at the start line is just gonna suck i'm gonna go home get a shower next week i'm racing that's an actual criterium this was more like a plastic slash circuit race next week i'm racing a criterium with only amateur riders so more my level guys stay tuned gonna see you next time see ya